Hey everyone, this is Daniel, and in today's video we're going to talk about how to limit the number of checkbox selections in a gallery. And I'll walk you through the whole thing, where I have an existing gallery, we'll add the checkbox control over there, and then using a combination of the properties and the formulas, how do I limit it to say just one selection in the gallery, or two, or maybe even three. So stick around, but first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. Now what I have over here is a Canvas app, and it's just a Shell app by Shell My Mint. I've gone ahead and just put in some design controls over here. No properties or any other fancy uh, formulas. That's what we're gonna do right now. So the whole criteria is that I have a gallery, now I'm gonna go ahead and add a checkbox, and then I should be able to put a limit to, in all these gallery items, I only want one checkbox selected, or I want two, or I want three. So let's start the process by first adding the checkbox property, and then we'll go ahead and add all the formulas. So in normal case, I just go ahead and select the gallery itself right on the top, go to insert, inside the input, I go ahead and select the checkbox, and right now I have my checkbox control. A Couple of things I do in, my, in this case is I go ahead and remove that text, which is the option, I don't need it. And the other thing, which is my personal preference, is that once you go and add that checkbox, and this happens for all the controls too, is if you select it, it shows this border. I personally do not like that, so I select that and I go ahead and I go to this border. Even though it's zero, I come over here and I go ahead and click on none, and now the border goes away. So it just makes it a little bit more user friendly, but that's just my personal preference. All right, so now let's work towards making it such that if one checkbox, either one of them, if this one or this one, whichever, if one of them is checked, then I want that checkbox only to be user accessible, all the other ones should be grayed out. And that's, that's not as easy as it looks, it really isn't, because think about it, in this case, the way galleries and, the, and the, this item works is if you've done a change to one, it affects all the other ones. And what we are trying to do is that if you made a selection on just one item, wherever it is in the gallery, then only that item's checkbox should be accessible, which means I should be able to check it and uncheck it, but all the other ones should be grayed out. So here's the magic and here's the formula and the combination of the properties that we use. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and add a label. I could also use this as a text control, whatever it is, but that's the one that I'm gonna to use to keep track of the count of selections. So for the label itself, I'll just call that as a count label. That way I have easy something to reference. But here is what we're gonna do, is we're gonna keep a track of all the selections that are happening, and here's the magic formula for that. I'm gonna use, if you haven't already guessed it, it's the count rows functionality, uh, or count rows function uh, formula. Now, it's not just the count, but it's the count rows, number of rows which have in the gallery. So you start typing in count, and the IntelliSense should be able to tell me that. It says, yep, it's count rows. But now, I want to count not all of them, only those that have been checked. And to, for me to be able to do that, I need to use the filter function. And so for the filter, I come in now and search for the filter. There we go. Right there, and I'm gonna say, for all my gallery items. So it's the gallery dot all items, not the selected, all items. And the criteria is that filter all the gallery items whose checkboxes have been selected. And for me, it is checkbox one dot value, which value will be true. So now I close it, and this is the count. So it's telling me right now everything that I already didn't see is that I got no, it's in my gallery, I got no checkboxes selected, therefore I got zero items, uh, the count is zero. And we can test that. I come in here, one, two, three, it does that. Now it's got nothing to do with me doing it in a very synchronous way, like it has to be from the top to bottom or from the bottom top, nothing like that. Let's check this out. If I go and uncheck these two, but if I go and check that, it's keeping track. So that formula, which is the count rows, and then the if function, which is inside the if function, your condition is the selected, you get this nice formula. And this is a critical part for us to keep track of the selections and then going ahead and you know uh, disabling the feature. Let me go and just save that so I make sure I don't miss any of my work. Okay, so we've done one pretty important part, but that's not it. We gotta now go ahead and mess around with the checkbox and specifically its display mode property. So now I come in and select the checkbox and over here you can actually go and either click on this drop down or search for it, or you can just start typing in display mode. And once you found it, hit tab, and you've got the whole formula over here. A little faster way to go in once you get used to it. So here it is. The display mode, its property setting by default is display mode.edit. Here is where we're gonna add some magic to it. 
So now I'm going to put in an if condition and inside the if condition, I am going to say that if the self value, if the value of that control is doing something, something, then go ahead and make that only that one check. And for this, the beauty is to use the self value because granted in the past, if I wanted to just reference that control, even though that's the control that I am in, I'm putting its formula, we used to use the controls name. And that was a little tedious because it was as if I don't really care which control it is. I just want to reference it. But now I do care. It is actually the control I am in. So it's basically this is the control saying it's myself and best thing about myself is the self property. So that's what I'm going to say self. I'm going to select that dot and its value. So what I'm saying is that self dot value, if the value is either true or false, that's what I'm saying. Or I'm going to go ahead and put that value. And this value is going to be the value of the count label. Count label dot text and put that as zero. If it is the value is equal to zero, then go ahead and make the display mode as edit. Otherwise, go ahead and make it disabled. So what I'm saying over here is that if the self value equals false, or if the count equals zero, then go ahead and allow people to edit. But if the self value equals true, or if the count no, is not equal to zero, then go ahead and just and uh, disable just that one control, and then all the other ones will be available. So let's just check that, all right? So I come over here, and now I'll randomly pick this one. And because I selected that all of the other ones have been disabled, but this one is still unable. And it's very important because I still need the functionality to go and uncheck that. And then once I do it, that property still applies, the formula still applies, and I can go and do it here, and it works. So this is kind of not as easy as you would think it is, but it's also very powerful. So let's think about it, okay? Now I've got the functionality to do one. What if I want to say allow two checkboxes? Well, let's go and look at the formula because it's a very simple functionality over here. So let's go back to that same selection. Let's go to the display mode. And what I want to do is I'm going to give it the additional ways that, hey, either if it's a uh, total number of um, the label count equals zero, or you can also put in the total number of label count for one. So let's type that in, okay? So I'm going to come in and I'm going to now put in another double code. So I'm going to say if the value, and I could have copied and pasted, but I'm going to just show it to you the same. If the la value of the count label dot text, if that is equal to one, or if it stays the other way, I did not close it. Close the brackets there. So let's test it. Now I have the function to add one, but hey, now I have, it, it didn't gray out. I put in the second one, ha, it went ahead and grayed out over there. So that's beautiful because let's take a look at the formula again. What the formula does is it's giving me now the additional functionality the same because previously it was, if it was zero, if the count text was zero, go ahead and grade out or disable it. Now I'm saying that if it is zero or if it is also equals to one, then you go ahead and disable it. So you're kind of understanding how the formula and the logic works. So let's take it to the next level. What if I want to allow only three selections? Well, how does the formula change? I think you understood that. So let's go and add that. It's in fact the exact same thing is where I come in and I'm going to put the R's and at this time, let's go try copying and pasting it. So I copy that entire one. I'm going to paste it inside. And this one is going to be two. Now let's go test it. And now you notice I went and updated the formula. Before at two, the whole thing grayed out. Now it is still available. The moment I add this one, it goes ahead and gives me the uh, grays it out. So it's beautiful. It's really powerful. But if you noticed that it is very specific to the number of checkboxes, and this this is the functionality where you can go ahead and select all of this however you want it. Wasn't that awesome? I mean, we were able to use the combinations of the property, the label, and then also this formulas to go ahead and achieve exactly what you wanted. So. Quick recap was those important formulas that we used. It was to use the self. The self property really helps because now you're referencing only the property and then you're using a combination of the if function and the count rows specifically for the checkbox. And now you can keep track of maybe it's just one selection you want to do or maybe just two or three. And you always remember that the count is always one level below. So if it was for one selection, then the total number of crows crowned was zero. If it was for two selections, the total number of ones were one and then so on and so forth. So keep that in mind. mind. Hopefully this was helpful. And as always, keep power apping. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube video. Remember, this is all free with fresh content that is updated on a weekly basis. So if you already subscribed to my channel, thank you and spread the word. If you haven't already, subscribe, click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.